And we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the final part of the show, we're going to talk about a couple things uh, regarding Nick Chubb and Geno Smith. So with Nick Chubb, uh, the Browns renegotiated his contract uh, to lower his base salary from $11.75 million for the 2024 season with the opportunity to earn it back through incentives. Obviously, Chubb suffered that horrific knee injury in Week 2 of the 2023 season ending his year and uh you know raised concern about his you know his future performance due to you know now him being at age 28 and also you know dealing with past injuries as well also in college um we're going back to college um and Chubbs was you know before the injury one of the most consistent running backs in the NFL I mean right now he's got 6,500 uh rushing yards uh, 48 rushing touchdowns over six seasons. You know, again, like I said, one of the more consistent running backs in the NFL. And just him getting hurt earlier in the season like that, that was, uh, again, one of the most devastating injuries of the 2023 season. And, you know, the Browns, they still pieced it together. They brought back Kareem Hunt. Jerome Ford ran the ball well for them last year. So the Browns still, you know, like... They figured it out. They still made the playoffs. I mean, obviously, with Nick Chubb and Deshaun Watson, it would have been different. Um, but having them the full year. But, yeah, they had Flacco come in towards the end of the year. And uh, they still made the playoffs. So credit to them. Again, season didn't end how they wanted it to against the Texans. But they still found a way. Um, so, yeah, there's been, like, limited updates uh, on Chubb's recovery, leading to speculation about his ability to return to form and his high cap number for 2024, which is $15.825 million. Uh, rather than releasing Chubb, the Browns opted to adjust his contract, like I said, allowing him to potentially earn back his salary uh, through the incentives, like I said. So right now, uh, the Browns' current running back depth, it consists of Naheem Hines and Deontay Foreman, so they brought those guys in. And, uh, yeah, so they're bringing it out. Oh, so bringing in a total of six running backs ahead of the draft. So, and listen, I like Deontay Foreman. Um, I feel like he could be, you know, a decent backup for them, you know, take over that Kareem Hunt role. Um, you still got Jerome Ford there as well. Naheem Hines is coming off of an injury himself. Uh, but, yeah, they brought in a ton of depth, you know, so they can try to ease Chubb back into it. And I hope they do because I like Nick Chubb. And, uh, again, you know, watching him go down, that, that again, that hurt the league as well, seeing him get hurt. Um, so I hope he is able to bounce back. Because, you know, this is a big year for the Browns. He comes back hopefully healthy. You got Deshaun Watson coming back. You know, he made moves by, you know, for example, well, he added to the running back depth, but you also traded for Jerry Judy. You signed him to a contract extension. You still got Amari Cooper there. David Njoku is coming off of a big year. You also have Elijah Moore there, a good defense. Coach of the year in Kevin Stavansky. So, I, I mean, the Browns, they should be a good team again in 2024 and should be battling for a playoff spot. Now, again, I look at the Bengals and the Ravens as the favorites for the division, so I think the Browns, their path to the playoffs, in my opinion, is through the wild card. But, you know, if, if Nick Chubb can get eased back into it and, you know, maybe be close to what he was before the injury. Browns, I think, could be in good shape. So, but, um, again, only time will tell with that. Again, I, I hope that he bounces back. But, yeah, like I said, limited updates on his uh, recovery. So, we'll see. And, yeah, getting older. He's getting into that old age for a running back. And, again, we're just like... We really are away from the time where it was like you thought Adrian Peterson and Marshawn Lynch were just going to be around forever. Um, but, yeah, it's just that's just how it is. Um, well, then again, you look at Derrick Henry. He's 30, and the Ravens signed him. And Derrick Henry could go out there with the Ravens and have, you know, this great year at 30. So he could be that – well, he already is that – this generation's, you know, Adrian Peterson, Marshawn Lynch. Um, but we'll see how he does in his new home. But, yeah, Nick Chubb, but, you know, Derrick Henry isn't coming off a significant injury like 
Nick Chubb is. You know, Nick Chubb's a couple years younger and has dealt with injuries before. You know, knee injury, I believe knee injuries in college. You know, it's just, it's unfortunate that this happens to him again. You know, now in the NFL against the Steelers on that Monday night. So we'll see what happens. But, um, you know, got to give the Browns credit for bringing in a lot of running back depth, you know, just so they can, they have backup plans for Chubb, you know, with them trying to, you know, if when he when he comes back, again, like I said, they want to ease him into it. So we'll keep an eye on it. So then the other thing I wanted to talk about was Geno Smith. So uh, he's entering now his 11th season in the NFL, which is crazy to think about. Um, he's determined to prove himself once again that he is the starting quarterback for the Seahawks. He is facing competition, though. Seahawks traded for Sam Howell. And I did say I think he's really going to push Geno Smith for that starting job. And, you know, things are going to be different because now you got a new head coach in Mike McDonald there coming over from the Ravens. No more Pete Carroll. Uh, Smith restructured his contract. I know we, we talked about that on a previous show. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's got to go out there and, and prove the doubters wrong again. He acknowledged uncertainty regarding the level of respect he receives in the league but finds motivation in continually fighting for it. Uh, he credits Pete Carroll with instilling a never say die mentality of always complete or always compete and expresses gratitude for Pete Carroll's influence influence on his career. While acknowledging the difficulty of Carroll's departure, Smith is embracing the direction under new head coach McDonald and offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb. Smith describes the offense as pretty complex under Grubb's system, but he and his teammates are committed to learning and adapting. He believes McDonald's vision for the teams, for the team, emphasizing the importance of buying into the new coaching staff's leadership. Despite the changes, Smith draws on his experience with coach, coaching changes in the past, and stresses stresses the importance of unity and buying into the new system for success. So I wanted to look at some of the uh, direct quotes from that in the article here. Uh, but yeah, he says, "I got everything to prove." Um, he said, new coaching staff, old coaching staff, I got everything to prove. Um, uh, he said, that's every day. That's the way I wake up every day. I'm competing with Sam Howell. I know he's competing with me. I'm going to compete my butt off. I'm competing with everybody in this building to be the best that I can be. I really don't approach it any other way. Um, but yeah, like I said, spoke very highly of Pete Carroll. Um, and yeah. This is so. This is some of the other stuff he had to say about Pete Carroll. Like I said, he mentioned the stuff that Carroll told him. Always compete. What he learned from Pete Carroll. Always compete. Always go for it. Never back down. The day is the day I'll remember forever, just because of how things happened for me. He said, obviously, Coach Carroll is a big influence on my career. Helped me out a bunch when I came to this organization. Really helped me thrust into the spotlight that I'm in now. For me, it was kind of a terrible moment to see someone that I love so much having to part ways with him. That's the way of the NFL. That's the way things go. Very excited for what we have here now and just the direction we're heading in. So, I mean, we'll see. But it just goes to show you that, you know, from what he said, he really praises Pete Carroll and really helped him out. And, yeah, the Seahawks really did believe in Geno because, you know, they traded for Drew Locke. Well, in the Russell, well they got Drew Locke in the Russell Wilson trade. And people were like, oh, well, it looks like Drew Locke's going to be the starter. No, Geno Smith really took that starting job, and, you know, they beat the Broncos week one in 2022, and then he said how, the famous quote of, you know, they wrote me off, but I didn't write back. And he did have a good 2023 season. Not as good of a 2023 season as 2022, but, you know, the Seahawks, they still had an opportunity to make the playoffs. And, you know, I think Geno, you know, he earned the right – um you know, to be the starter, has earned the right to be the starter, um, you know, these last couple of seasons, but now it's, you know, different coaching staff, and I think what I meant to say was he er has earned the right to, you know, still, you know, start games in this league and, and be, you know, at least the backup quarterback, I, I think that's probably what could end up happening, hope I just knocked my mic into my mic, apologize for that, but um, you know, I, like I said, I, I think Sam Howell is really going to push him 
for this starting job. So he's got to go out there. Like you said, he's going to go out there and compete and not back down. And I think that's a good mindset to have. Um, but we'll see. I, I mean, with the Seahawks, I, I think you, you want to see what you have in Sam Howell. Because, you know, the Seahawks have a good roster. And I think with Geno Smith, you know, the ceiling's not very high. They maybe could advance in the playoffs, get into the second round possibly, but I don't really see them going any further than that if they were to get in. Now, they did miss the playoffs in 2023. So, you know, and of course you got the Rams who got better. Again, had a bounce back year, and you still got the 49ers. So the division's tougher. You know, the Rams swept the season series with them. The 49ers, of course, did. Yeah, I mean, your only wins came against the Cardinals. So, um, you know, they they got a, they got some competition in that division. So, you know, right now their best path is to make the playoffs through the wild card. But, I mean, we'll see. Is it going to be – I think if Geno Smith struggles, you know, then it's going to be Sam Howell. But I think now with this new regime, you're going to have them battle it out. And for me, I would like to see Sam Howell be the starter and see what he does with this, you know, better team that he's now with. Because, again, got off to a good start in Washington. And then, you know, things just did not go well as the season progressed. Um, so, I mean, I, there is some talent there with Sam Howell. Now, again, I, I don't look at Sam Howell as, like, the next elite quarterback, but, you know, was up there in passing yards. I, I mean, he, again, first couple games, he looked pretty good. And even in some of the games that they lost, he looked good, but there were some games where, that they did lose that he looked pretty bad. Like the Cowboys game on Thanksgiving and, you know, it just uh, giant games. But did look good against the Eagles, even though the Eagles' defense wasn't very good. But still, you know, like... In losing efforts, he did perform well. But in other games that they lost, did not play well. But I, I also, he was one of the most sacked quarterbacks in the NFL, too. So now you're on the Seahawks again. You're on, in a better situation. I'd like to see how he does. And again, because you got a pair of good running backs. You got, you know, a trio of solid wide receivers. I, You know, I'd like to see what he could do. And I think he'll have the opportunity to compete for that starting job. But we'll see. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an interesting competition. If sorry, uh, holding holding back a sneeze here. Um, it's gonna be an interesting competition between him and Geno Smith. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, that's uh, but that is pretty much it for the show for today. Again. With this, these topics here, let me know your thoughts in the comments with the uh, Seahawks quarterback situation. Who do you think will get the starting job ultimately? And as well as Nick Chubb's uh, contract situation, um, how do you guys see him bouncing back? I mean, again, hope he does because, you know, he is a great player. But, again, getting older as a running back, significant knee injury. Yeah, it's going uh, to be tough. But hoping for the best for Chubb. And I hope he bounces back and has a productive year for the Browns. And the Browns are hoping for a better year and not last year where you had a ton of injuries. So, but yeah, another uh, another week in the books. These weeks just fly by. I mean, that's just that's just how it is lately, at least for me. Um, but yeah, uh, again, make sure to tune in to all the other shows as well. Get perspectives on... Uh, other sports here on the GSMC Sports Network. Also, for football as well. Um, like I said, always give the other show some love. Um, but yeah, uh, that is uh, that is all the time that we uh, have for today, though. I'll wrap it up here. Again, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back again on Monday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And until then... I'm your host, Kenneth Gruenfelder, signing off from the GSMC Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Have a good day, have a good weekend, and I will talk to you guys on Monday. Take care.